Cleveland Browns at the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams are favored by three and a half here. Uh, Rams are just on the outside looking in as far as the playoff picture. The number nine seed tied with both the, I'm sorry, the, yeah, tied with the Packers and the Saints at five and six. And the Browns right now clinging to a playoff spot with the six seed at seven and four. With Joe Flacco coming in at quarterback. Is he going to start? He's taking the first team reps. Uh, DTR obviously got blasted out of the game last week, concussed. Um, so, yeah, Flacco's taking the first team reps, and that's what it looks like. If you get um, early career Joe Flacco, yeah, 2008 to 10, maybe 11. Seems unlikely given that he's now like 127 well, years old. Just from like a, they didn't, they didn't drop back a ton. They treated him. It was kind of like early career Ben Roethlisberger and Russell Wilson. It's like, all right, you're going to drop back 25, 30 times a game. Just don't lose it for us. Hit a couple deep outs here and there. Can Flacco get back to that? There was points later in his career where it, they moved him. He was more of like a high volume passer. And that did not go so well for Joe Flacco. So, can he be the game manager type that just lets the defense do what they've been doing this year in Cleveland? I think he might be able to do that better than what they have on the roster. So probably the right move here for the Browns, even in, you know, in, in, even with the uh, with even if there weren't injuries. Maybe I mean late career, late era Joe Flacco though always struck me as this guy that he was one of these sort of players where they kind of like Jimmy Garoppolo, where it's like. You're, they're always termed these game managers, but they don't actually play like it. Like all you do is reduce the frequency in which the turnover where they play happens because he's attempting fewer passes. But it's not actually the percentage isn't any different, right? Like he's still going to throw the ball to the defense one out of every 10 passes. It's just that you're now only passing 20 times. One so, out of 10? That's yeah, whatever it is. One out of 15, whatever. Pick your number. The point being... That, that number's not changing. All you're doing is reducing the overall number of attempts he's making. So I kind of feel like scaling back Joe Flacco's role in this game doesn't fundamentally change what Joe Flacco is. It just potentially changes the frequency with which he's going to cost you the game. And I'm, I'm asking for the low-volume Flacco yeah. because the, the last time we saw him, he was the starting quarterback for the Jets, Week one against Baltimore, last just last year. Yeah. He dropped back 62 times. Mm -hmm. And then against the Browns, 47 times. And they made that crazy comeback. So he, he had a hand in making a, a comeback against the Browns. Um, and then he dropped back 56 times against Cincinnati in week three with a 27 grade. Yeah. He was uh, averaging like 300 yards a game. Um, and yet they were like, there were six turnover-worthy plays in that final game against the Bengals. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, that's enough of that, Joe. Sit down. Yeah, so you just – I don't think you – I don't think you want that. And he has not been a – last time he was really a full-time starter was 2019. But, I mean, they're, they're asking him to just kind of hold the fort here and trust that their defense has been so good, so good against the pass. Number one EPA per play uh, against as far as defenses go. Uh, Miles Garrett's got the shoulder injury. We thought it was going to be much worse. He might actually play yeah. in this game. So, yeah, that's what they're expecting from Flacco here. Yeah, I kind of wonder with the Miles Garrett thing. I He strikes me as a little bit like Trey Hendrickson, where, you know, he played since he got that knee injury, but he hasn't been Trey Hendrickson since that knee injury. He's had a couple of sacks yeah. or a couple of splash plays here or there, but he's gone from being – he was putting up – Trey Hendrickson was putting up the kind of season that was right on the borderline of, like, all pro level. Um, and he's not been that guy since he got hurt. Miles Garrett was putting together the kind of season that was defensive player of the year, you know, highest PFF pass rushing grade we've ever seen, still leads the NFL in terms of pass rush win rates, his third in pressure rate. He might play, but are we actually getting Miles Garrett or are we just getting a guy that's, you know, playing with his arm in a sling essentially and trying to get that done? That's a huge variable, I think. Like, just playing is is like a tick in the box exercise for me. It's like, are we actually getting Miles Garrett or are we just getting this guy that's trying to play and keep his sort of game alive? He's also good enough, though, to, you know, draw double teams. And, you know, I think they're deep enough on the defensive line. They have the number three, the Browns, number three pass rush grade in the NFL. They're deep enough that they can get help. Uh, that they couldn't get in previous years maybe just getting some extra attention 
is worth it. I just don't know how long that would last if it becomes clear that he's not really Miles Garrett. I mean, last week he played quite a lot with the injury and had no impact, essentially. Yeah. I mean, that was Max Crosby last week. Max yeah. Crosby's only play was a cleanup sack, basically. Right. Uh, but he was still drawing double. Like, the Chiefs still gave him a sure. lot of attention just because he was on the field. But my, yeah, so my question would be for Garrett. Like, if he plays, and it's pretty clear quite quickly that he's not real Miles Garrett, he's just a guy wearing his number and looking the same, how quickly does that attention dissipate? Or do they – it's in the game plan, so he's going to keep a double team all the way through the game. And even if he does nothing, if he ends up with zero pressures on, you know, 25 pass rushing snaps – he still had the impact of drawing the extra help and the the different alignments of the running backs and the tight ends and stuff. And, you know, his imp- his benefit will be felt by the other players on that defensive line. On the other side, the Rams are coming off of a dominant run game performance. Kyron Williams, uh, outstanding last week. He's had a, a really nice season. And the Rams' run game has been sneaky good this year against a Browns defense where if you're going to have success, it's probably going to be on the ground. So can they... Can the Rams, you know, play that play that game? Uh, they're number four in EPA per play uh, from a run game perspective. The Rams this year, they have not, like, they haven't been really a good. They weren't a good running team when they went to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. The Rams are kind of weird. They haven't been trying that. to analyze their season and everything. I think they're we we highlight their pass protection quite a bit. This is one of those games where it could get wrecked depending on Miles Garrett, but they've got the run game to probably combat that this year, this week. They haven't had a great running game since Todd Gurley called you a clown. That's not true. Isn't it? Because C.J. Anderson, Mm -hmm. that very season, came off the couch and had an effective second half of the season. So, you know, last third of the season on the way to the Super Bowl. Okay, so the, they, haven't, they haven't had a good running game since the season that Todd Gurley called you a clown. I would, yeah. <laughs> and I would, I would actually flip that, and I would say since I said Todd Gurley is not an MVP candidate on NFL Network, yeah. and he subsequently took it to InstaFace or whatever he did and called me a clown, uh-huh. they, yeah, they, so, yeah, they haven't had a great run game since then. And Todd Gurley hasn't played good football since I said he was an MVP candidate and he called me a clown either. That's true. If you want to look at it through that lens. Yeah. It's too bad those things don't live. That was kind of funny. Hmm. Um, I had Chris Chris email me that Todd Gurley had called me a clown. Email you? On social media. It was like Chris's assistant saw it, sent it to Chris. (laughs) He emailed it to me and said, ha, 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 join the club, basically. Like, you're a clown like me. Yeah. That's what Chris said. Welcome to the clown face. Because yeah. Chris was a, he remember he was he was at the Eagles parade. Chris, yeah, his face as a clown right. was at the Eagles parade because Chris hates every team, including the Eagles, who won the Super Bowl that year. Well, because he was on the broadcast, right? And the he Eagles, was on the broadcast, and he probably Eagles, said like, "This isn't a touchdown or something." Yeah, yeah. The Eagles fans hated that broadcast. So they, yeah, they thought he was like dead set against him for the entire broadcast. Yeah. I mean, literally every person that I meet that we when we start talking about Chris, he's like, "Why do they?" Why do they? Why does he hate my team? Yeah, well, I mean that's us as well. Yeah, why every, do we hate my team? every fan base thinks we hate their team. We do, equally though. Um, the yeah, that, like this is the, the the Browns defense is so good that this is the type of game where the Rams are going to struggle, right? I think they might be able to run the ball. Really? Yeah, hmm. I think they're going to run it. I that's going to be their I, game. I kind of feel like the Browns' defense is so good that this is going to be a bad Rams game rather than a good one. They're good, but they, look, I, I think the the the, play, the pass rush is going to take a hit, whether Garrett – with or without <laughs> Miles Garrett. Pass rush takes a little bit of a hit. Um, there are plays to be made in this Browns secondary, a few plays per game. Stafford will find those, and they'll run the ball pretty well. And then it's a matter of, you know, you got to trust Joe Flacco on the other side. And as people know, and yeah, <laughs> look at you. You would never bet. Would you just type in? Cleveland. You're, you're taking Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. Ride or die. Off Joe. the couch. Two weeks, two weeks ago, he was just you and me on a Sunday afternoon watching YouTube TV. He's rested. Rested. He had a few games last, last year to keep his eye in, right? And now he's had some rest and recuperation on the couch. And now Joe's ready to go up there and, and blow torch the Rams. <laughs> You're a Flacco guy late in his career. Mm-hmm. I'll take the Rams. Three and a half, though. That's a lot of points. Look, it's I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of images on social media that say that Joe Flacco is elite. 
Therefore, he's going to beat the Rams. Elite quarterback plus uh, plus elite best defense. defense in the NFL equals win. So you're a big uh, funniest thing possible type of guy. Uh huh. What is this like? Flacco has a has a good little run. Like goes into Kansas City <laughs> and wins a playoff game. Like what do you? What do you like? Goes into Baltimore and wins a playoff game. That would be pretty special. Is that the funniest thing possible? That would be pretty funny. I mean, Flacco doing any kind of positive things for the Browns in the playoffs would be pretty funny. So the Broncos shutting out the Dolphins in the playoffs on the road. Flacco, what if Flacco against the Ravens. What if Flacco gets his second ring on the back of coming off the couch and leading the Browns with this? Like, has a Trent Dilfer like run? where he just does nothing positive to this team whatsoever, but somehow they keep stumbling into wins after wins, and he gets a second ring. And the now Browns win a Super Bowl. Right. Well, now his career is validated, right? He, beca- he gets that Eli Peyton Manning bump of, I got two now, shut the hell up. <laughs> Nobody can say a damn word. I'm in the Hall of Fame. That's the best thing that could happen. You're telling me we're like nine or ten weeks away from a Joe Flacco Hall of Fame case being solidified? Yes. All right. The second ring gets you in. You can't ever say anything. Tyler's not here today. He's like, he's <laughs> listening somewhere, cheering. Like, I love this. I told you. The problem is you could paint any picture you want. We just painted this whole picture with Joe Flacco's making a Super Bowl. And run. it's particularly and we funny. We haven't seen him throw a pass this year. Yeah, and the funniest way of doing it is is the Trent Dilfer way where, like, you are – not only are you a passenger, but, like, you're an active drag. No, you have to have one 96-yard pass to Shannon Sharp per game. You have to have one of those. But, like, but it's it's not, you know, it's not an Eli run where, like, you're actually carrying this thing or you're seriously contributing in a positive direction to this. Like, you have to be actively dragging this thing down, and yet somehow they win anyway. That's okay. the funniest way. So I think I need to... Uh, like Joe funny. Flacco ends up beating the Ravens in the playoffs going like 8 for... He goes into Baltimore, into Kansas City. Yeah, but like 8 for 27, you know, for like yeah. 82 yards and an interception. They and somehow they win nine. the game anyway because, yeah. you know, Miles Garrett had two fumble recoveries With in a... Broken shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, I might have to take the Browns after this picture that you've painted mm-hmm. here. But I'll take the Rams to cover the three and a half.